Hi, this is Pastor Ray Crystal, and uh, I'm uh, an assistant associate pastor with the Religion of Jesus Church here in Maui. We have branches throughout the Hawaiian Islands, and uh, we'd like to wish you a happy Easter, and uh, may the love of Jesus Christ be in your heart, and uh, we, we just really want to pray for Hawaiian Islands and the problems we have associated with drug use and abuse in, in our community. Um, I, for many years here in Maui, have been the uh, uh, facilitator for people uh, with education about uh, medical cannabis for the sick and dying. Uh, and elderly. Um, last Friday evening, a week ago, I was on the Dialogue Show on Hawaiian Public Television, which I'd like to show a tape of on, on this cable network. And I debated a doctor in substance abuse and uh, also the DEA officer and, the, and Major Tano of the Hawaii uh, uh, Honolulu Vice Commander. And uh, we got into a good discussion, a loving discussion, about how we could problem solve. And the police admitted that they don't want people going to jail anymore for use, that those people have become victimized by drugs in our society. And we moved the discussion. We evolved it along to where we decided that, and the president has decided this, that medically we are going to deal with the problem more than as a criminal justice incarceration problem. So people need to start taking the fear out of their lives about using and people they see using drugs and we have to start using the church and the medical community to solve problems. Um, if you are in Maui County and you are in need of education f about medical cannabis, I want you to call my office and there is a defense that was uh, mentioned in the show. Uh, it's penal code. Uh, this is Hawaii penal code. For 20 years, it's been buried in the penal code. And it's 712-1240-1. Uh, it's a defense to promotion. What it basically boils down to is if you're a medical need and your doctor will prescribe medicine of uh, marijuana for you, that as a practitioner, as a religious practitioner and a pastor in a church, we have a defense, me as a facilitator in education to teach you how to grow it in your house. And you as the, uh, you have a right to your life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness and to heal yourself. That's our basic, most human right we have. And so there's a defense in the law, and this is the state law. And um, we will help you in every way possible on this. Uh, very quickly, there's books that I would like you to be cognizant of, and this is what we always like to talk about is, is that in the United States every year from tobacco, which is a very addictive substance and, and causes devastation of three to 400,000 deaths, alcohol is devastating and we know that Jesus made the wine at the wedding feast and made drugs as his first miracle and, and so we are free to pursue intoxicants in, in the kingdom of heaven that we're in. And, but still, people abuse it to the extent in America of 150,000 deaths. Now, marijuana has never caused a single death in the history of the world here, according to the doctor I debated on the dialogue, and they can't come up with a person yet that'll say that there's uh, been death or that there's a lethal dose to marijuana. So what we're trying to do is put on an armor of like a police officer puts on when they're going in and they're raiding uh, uh, someone and they're putting on all this body armor, we could put on the body armor of the law. And the law has stated religious use of cannabis is legalized. Uh, the Ninth Appellate Court has ruled this. It's, the police have been cognizant of it for six months now. They're not about to advertise it. We're not trying to hype it. What we're saying is our church and our sacrament is religiously legal now under the Ninth Appellate Court and the, Re the uh, Freedom Restoration Act for Religion signed by the President in 1994. There's also been a directive, uh, uh, it's an executive order by the President that says industrial hemp, industrial hemp is a strategic food and resource for fiber which you can make clothing, canvas, paper, 
and also that cellulose can be used to make the new substance in 1936 that uh, DuPonts wanted it to just be made out of coal or out of oil. You can use the same byproduct, you can use the same uh, product of cellulose in the stalk of the sensimia. In other words, we could be growing medical marijuana and take the stalk of it and make plastic to build homes for Hawaiians at very inexpensive rates. Or we could build an automobile. I could show you a picture real quickly here on page 50 of a car that Henry Ford made out of cannabis. I know it's hard for people to believe it, but here's a car made out of cannabis that not only did Henry Ford want the car to be made out of plastic made from hemp, but he wanted it to be run. In other words, the fuel. There was a process where you could renewably take plants, especially hemp, and after you take the seeds off for the food to feed starving people or to feed animals or to press that oil into the lubricating li uh, lubricants for the grease and the oil in the car. So literally, we can use plants, natural resources given to us by God, our creator, to solve problems here in Maui. Now, the National Review, which is the uh, publication of the conservative right and William F. Buckley, who is a scholar, has come out recently. This is the second front page in a year where he said, yeah, it's Paul, people. Uh, the, the war on drugs, is the war on drugs really lost? And he gives 17 scholarly points in this magazine where he feels that the way to go is harm reduction and immediate relaxation of laws against cannabis for even recreational use. Our goal as a church is to convince the state Supreme Court, our legislature, our governor, our mayor, our, our county council, that cannabis must re remain in one's home in the beginning until further uh, studies are done on, on how Holland has solved the problem of differentiating hard drug use from soft drugs. In Holland, you can go in to a, well, there's over a thousand different, they euphemistically use the term coffee shop. And we know these are marijuana hashish clubs, where you go in and you smoke either hashish, which is the resins that are collected by literally in ancient times in India. They'd have the women, of course. The, they would be more, you know, or the slaves would do this. The, the people that were not the, the princes and the religious leaders, they were the recipients of the hash oil, which is called charis in, in, in India, which is sacred. And they would rub the plant, and then this black gooey tar would be rubbed into te Nepalese temple balls. And that was for the shaman, uh, the top shamans, the priestly class, the Brahmin class, the sadhus in India that walk around almost butt naked in India smoking cannabis as a religious sacrament. When they went to Jamaica and started preaching uh, to the black slaves uh, who also had this plant from Africa in their religions, and from the triangulation from the from the south with the Zulus and, and what we know as South Africa, all the way up to the Moroccan Keith and across to the, uh, to the shamans in, e in, in Egypt, uh, the hist where the therapeutics, the, the ancient, where we get the word therapeutics from the ancient shamans of Egypt, cannabis has been used for religion and medicine since the beginning of time, immemorial, 12,000 year history. And here now, with the new machinery that we can take and make plastic and build homes and make furniture, make automobiles, run automobiles on one single plant, let alone if we started to realize the potential of other plants. See, when a plant is, is useful, they give it a Latin word by the name of sativa. So cannabis sativa means cultivated for usefulness. That's what cannabis sativa means. So for them to try to eradicate a plant where they have laws against extinction, in other words, if there's some obscure plant like this tree here that was being eradicated, it's against the law. But all of a sudden, they can fly helicopters to go after a plant that most of the people uh, of the world in religion has said has been a sacrament, and that can be made into plastic and paper so that we don't have to cut down trees. We can feed starving people. We can give medicine to people to alleviate their suffering, because that's what cannabis is. It doesn't cure diseases. It alleviates suffering. It's an analgesic. It's a comforter, like the Holy Spirit that comes on us when we need it, and we pray, and the Lord is with us. And, it's, and, and so at the time of Jesus, it was very common for Jewish women in childbirth. In fact, they found a number of bodies where the women, they didn't have cesarean, I guess, in those days, or wasn't perfected yet. And the women died in childbirth, and they found ch chunks of hashish in their stomach. And they went, oh, 
So over time now, we know in the last few years, because of Ronald Reagan saying that marijuana kills brain cells just like alcohol. So they did a study on it. They got them to back it up, and they did a study. And what did the doctors, the scientists find? They said, well, we found that there's receptor sites in the brain, and we, we think there's a marijuana drug in the brain that we didn't know existed because we found these receptor sites. So when a person smokes marijuana, it gets in the blood, it flushes over these receptor sites that are there for some reason, and the person gets high. And when the person, uh, when, the, when the receptor sites are maxed out, they start to shut down so that the person starts to not get any higher. You can only get so high. You can't overdose on marijuana. You can't kill yourself, and you can't get any higher than what you can get. And the more you abuse it, and the more you're compulsive, and the more you are a chronic smoker of cannabis, the more you're just hurting yourself. Because you can only, what the key in this cannabis, if you use it somewhat in ritual and in your, in your spiritual life and you're responsible, you'd use it occasionally. Maybe you need it when you come home from work at a hard day's work and you need the relief and the stress reduction of this. That is a big killer in our society of stress. And, and so on this book here, let me just show you that for 100 years in American history, babies, infants were given the strongest tincture in other words, this hash oil that I was talking about, the charis, the resin, was made into a, a liquid. And it was given to babies. And here's our constitution made out of hemp. If this constitution stands for anything, it stands for my right to say the truth here today. Our church stands for truth. If we can be out debated and, and what we're against is, is lies about cannabis and lying to the children, if you allow us to talk to the children, I feel we can do everything to postpone their their usage prematurely until if they are so precocious because all the music from rock and roll and jazz on up to their hip hop and reggae has pushed them to want to use marijuana. Maui Waui, the thing that this island is most famous for in this community and these islands are most famous for is pushed into a forbidden fruit situation. Help us and help yourself and, and help your pastors and, and let's talk about this. Please have me over at your church or at your civic group to talk about this and let's dialogue on this like that award-winning show that I was on last Friday and help public broadcasting help this station because we don't get the opportunities to, for, for common people to come on the air to speak too often we're pushed away from the media and that's a problem in this country so all the wonderful aloha from our church to you for this Easter season and let us love each other and create a brotherhood and a sisterhood here in the Hawaiian Islands that can be a beacon to the world and we'll bring millions of people to Hawaii to, uh, to share the, the aloha and the aina. God bless you. Aloha.